Hello everybody and welcome along to this video which is Mr Johnson Teaches Inspector Ghoul Revision part of the series of videos which I've put together recapping and revising all of the main characters and some of the key ideas linked with an Inspector Calls and Inspector Calls of course is part of your GCSE English Literature and of the two papers it's paper two so the second one that you sit and it's section A making it the first part of that second paper which is then followed by the poetry and the unseen poetry so as I go through this be ready to pause this video at key moments but also what's really important right now is that you've got pen and paper in front Front of you and you're able to make your own notes. Listening and watching the video is important however writing down your own notes means firstly you've got something to look back at and revise from and secondly you're much more likely to remember the information if you are writing it down and recording it. So with those key messages out of the way we're going to move on and have a look at this character who is of course one of the most important characters in the play. More on that coming up. So who is he then, in case you've completely forgotten? Inspector Ghoul is certainly, as I've put there, a mysterious figure who arrives to ask questions of the Burling family after the suicide of a young girl in the town of Brumley. Um, that's it really. He is the central character, as I've said, and the stage directions on that second bullet point are really key. So he's described as he creates an impression of massiveness, solidity and purposefulness. That's how he's described uh, in the stage directions when he enters um, about 10, 12 pages in it is roughly. So massiveness, okay, so he almost seems very big and imposing. Solidity, as in he, he is a strong character, that key word, like solid. And purposefulness, he knows what he's doing and he has a purpose and he's set to it. Another key point I'd point out to you in case you've never considered it, the name Ghoul, he's described as his name, excuse me, he's not described as, his name is Inspector Ghoul. And he's almost got that pun, that word play going on there, that perhaps it is a suggestion that he is this ghostly figure who's come to almost look at the uh, the morals of the Burling family. Um, he certainly stands up for the girl and against the harm that was caused by her throughout the play. He uses lots of emotive language and sort of uh, emotive imagery to try and make the family feel guilty. And I've put at the very bottom there, a key term that you may not have been used before. He could be described as the author surrogate. And in simple terms, what that means is he could be like J.B. Priestley, the writer of the play. It could be him on stage. So J.B. Priestley's ideas, his voice, not quite literally his voice, but his words are put Put into the play through the character of Inspector Ghoul. So you mustn't say that he is the author surrogate, but you could say it could be suggested that the inspector is the author surrogate. So what does the inspector do in the play? Well, a lot is the answer to that. On the screen right there now are some key moments for the inspector. So he arrives at the, the celebratory meal um, and then he reveals, of course, there's been a suicide of this young girl. And then he goes around questioning each of the characters in turn. Um, each one of them has a link to the girl and he establishes that. And the style in which he does that, he makes them recognise their own responsibility. Things are revealed bit by bit by bit gradually and structurally that's quite interesting because Priestley is basically trying to build the tension and build the trauma and keep us as an audience guessing about what the link is going to be and the chain of events I've quoted there you'll see in a minute on the quotes page is a really key uh, line from the play he also shows no concern for the social status so he's not intimidated by these Burling family who are socially superior to him they are far richer they're far more powerful and more important than he is but he doesn't let that stop them him interrogating them in a very straightforward and also sometimes very blunt and occasionally aggressive way um, at the very bottom there that bullet point there is really really key he makes an important and powerful speech before leaving uh, which focuses on responsibility and the consequences in the future of what happens if we don't take responsibility. And the real key thing about the inspector is whenever you talk about him, make sure you directly contrast him with Mr. Burling because at the beginning of the play, you've got Mr. Burling's speech full of dramatic irony where he makes incorrect predictions about the future. And then just before the inspector leaves, he makes his own speech, which contrasts and juxtaposes that Burling speech because the inspectors seem to be... Uh, uh, include correct predictions about the future. So those are two key moments. So whenever you talk about Burling, contrast with the inspector. And if you talk about the inspector, contrast it with Mr. Burling. So here are some key quotes. There are many, many quotes in this play you could choose for the inspector. I've tried to sort of whittle it down to these few that you see on the screen because I feel they've all got something you could say about them. Remember, with quotes, you don't need to learn all of that word by word. If you could remember one or two words from a quote, 
that will be enough and just enough for you to be able to then analyze it. So like the first one, because what happened to her then may have determined what happened afterwards, what happened afterwards may have driven her to suicide, a chain of events. You could just remember chain of events. It was just I've included the rest of it to try and give it some context to that quote and let you see what it uh, what its full uh, set of lines were. And the next one down, she wasn't pretty when I saw her today, but she had been pretty, very pretty. And the next quote after that as well, both are good examples of that emotive language I was talking about. This emotional manipulation that the inspector does with the family, trying to make them empathise as well as sympathise with her. Because at the minute, they have very little sympathy and empathy for her because their lives are so different. The inspector's lines are very good and he does this throughout the play. So if you could remember bits of some of those quotes, that would be really useful for like building up that sympathy in the audience and in the characters of the Burling family. Like that third quote, if sometimes we try to put ourselves in the place of these young women counting pennies in their dingy little back bedrooms. Uh, so key words like counting pennies and dingy, just all conjuring up this real strong imagery. The next one down is a really important quote said to Mr. Burling by the inspector. Public men, Mr. Burling, have responsibilities as well as privileges. So the privileges are the good things that you get for holding power, but you also must take responsibility if you're going to have these privileges. One either, Now, the last three quotes, in fact, all come from the same bit of speech, the inspector's final speech, and I've chunked them like that. There are other lines in there. It's well worth checking that out, and I do intend, hopefully, at some point to put a video together for that as well. You might find that on my channel by now when you're watching, when we unpick this speech. It's a really key speech. One Eva Smith is gone, but there are millions and millions and millions, the repetition, of Eva Smiths and John Smiths left with us. Those, that surname being a really common surname, symbolic that these characters represent the working class, the millions that mustn't be overlooked, that the inspector is standing up for. The next one, we are members of one body, we are responsible for each other, repetition of we, the key word responsible there. Members of one body being like this metaphor, how we're all part of the same uh, community. And again, that is one which is really good to remember because it contrasts up against what Mr. Burling said at the start of the play about as if we're all mixed up together, like bees in a hive, community and all that nonsense is what he says. Well, this quote's really useful there because that one almost directly juxtaposes it again, showing the real difference between the characters. And then the final quote, I tell you the time will come soon when, if men will not learn that lesson, they'll be taught it in fire and blood and anguish. Good night. So you've got that triplet at the bottom there, but the real emotive, strong imagery, fire, blood, anguish. And he's referring essentially to the Second World War there and the First World War, in fact. This play is set in 1912. The First World War was 1914. The Second World War, 1939. These are events which the audience at this time knew about because they're watching it after those events. They know what the inspector says is true and therefore it makes him seem more believable. It makes him seem like he's got greater authority than Mr. Burling. In many ways, those few quotes are really, really key and again could be contrasted with the Burling speech. So what does the inspector represent then? Uh, you might just be able to make him out over, over Eric's shoulder there, gazing down with a steely expression. Certainly he's the working classes, he's giving them a voice. As an inspector, he's not completely working class, but of the two, he certainly sits more with the working class than he does with the upper class. He wouldn't have been a super wealthy person. But again, giving them a voice, by which I mean he is representing Eva Smith and putting forward her side of the argument and making those characters feel sympathy for her, something she's unable to do either in life or in death, whereas he's got just enough power to be able to do that and that, yeah, that manipulation he can do of the Berlin family. The second bullet point now I put responsibility. He certainly represents this responsibility, but also social justice. So justice is where you uh, where you give something somebody excuse me you give somebody something they deserve. Social justice is almost that wider community. These are not written rules, but this is about behaviour, about actually behaving like a good human being. And finally, I put there as well as I mentioned earlier, Priestley's views is what he represents. This socialist idea, certainly standing up for the idea of community and working together. And in that sense, that's where that phrase author surrogate could come in. Themes you could link him with, I mean, these are just a few on the screen. There'll certainly be other themes as well, but absolutely he is a representation of responsibility in the play. He makes each of those characters in turn recognise and realise and see what their responsibility towards Eva Smith and other people like her needs to be. Power, in the sense he actually does have power over the others. 
uh, the others in the family, I should say. And he has enough authority that he's able to make them realise the consequences of their actions. Class, in the sense of he is breaking down the class barriers. Um, socialism, because of what I've mentioned earlier, how he is representing the community and the working classes particularly. And that's where justice and equality comes in as well, giving them a voice. So possible exam questions when it comes to the GCSEs? Well, uh, questions have come up already, as you'll see in brackets there. How does Priestley use the, ins the character of the inspector to suggest ways that society could be improved? That was a question in May 2017, so a little while ago. So he might come up as a named question again. But absolutely, the inspector is there to stand for these characters and give a voice to, as I've talked about in this video already. So you could make those ideas linked to that question. The next one, how does Priestley explore the importance of social class? The inspector isn't mentioned there, but absolutely will be a really good character for you to name in that question. And that's, again, one where you could contrast him with Mr. Burling as part of your answer for that. Other suggestions there, how does Priestley present selfishness and its effects? That was May 2019's question, or one of the two questions, because do remember you get a choice of questions on this exam. So selfishness, well, the inspector isn't a selfish character, but the point is you could then start talking about Mr. Burling and once again contrast him with the inspector to show how one is selfish. And the opposite of that would be very selfless. That's all one word, how he's a very selfless character. Finally, a, co a question which I made up at the bottom there. How does Priestley use the inspector to show the importance of responsibility? Well, he makes each of the Burling family characters in turn realise their responsibility and realise that their actions have consequences. Always try and link it back to a message like I just did there about actions have consequences of one of the key messages. Check out my other video though. I've got a video on my channel linking with J.B. Priestley which explores his messages in more details. Do check that one out. That's a real... Uh, a real way of gaining more marks on the exam is talking about the messages. And finally, to end this then, some quick recap questions for you to have a go at. Uh, some very straightforward, some include finishing quotes, um, but test yourself on that and write down those answers. All of those are contained within the video. We've gone through them already. And that's where I'm going to end this one. hope it wasn't too much of a rush. There's a lot to try and fit in, but I'm trying to keep these videos as short as is possible. Go through and check out the other characters. Really make sure you target your weaknesses. If you feel like you don't know Gerald well or don't know Eric or Sheila or whoever it is really well, watch the video I've put on the channel here and make sure you're making notes for yourself. And go off and explore other websites as well. Revision guides and revision websites are really useful. Um, above all, have a go at some exam questions. Um, this is what I'm going to end the video. Do check out the other ones on the channel, as I've said, and all sorts, including Macbeth and The Christmas Carol and all sorts on my channel. And uh, I'll just say thanks very much for watching this video all the way to the end, and goodbye.